Okay, I'd like to open up the meeting, Wakely Finance Committee, on July 8th. It is 6 p.m. or darn close to it. Um, tonight we have our agenda and we will uh, review um, and vote on the minutes. We have some reserve fund transfers and we will continue our discussion on a financial reporting and transparency project that uh, we began some time back. Okay, so I'd like to motion to accept the minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Reserve fund transfer. Oh, I think roll, uh, roll call vote. Oh, sorry. Okay. Back to Actually, the minutes. Yeah, let's just do roll call vote. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, there's no one remote, but I think we might still have to. Okay. Patty? Yep. Paul? Yep. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Minutes have been accepted. Okay. Um, we shall now go to reserve fund transfers. These are emailed earlier. Thank you. I got more. These are the only ones that I was handed. Uh, the first one's Board of Health. Right. Reserve fund request transfer for $260. Uh, the request is several extra expenses for Board of Health communications during COVID pandemic. Signed, Francis Fortino. Uh, just, to, just to summarize, so each year we sign a committee uh, recommends we set aside twenty thousand dollars for reserve fund transfer. It's uh, money that is, um, well, it's money that's appropriated and is expended as the well majority vote of the finance committee. Um, it's really to, I mean, the purpose of it is to cover any unforeseen expenses in the fiscal year. Right now, the there's still twenty thousand remaining in the reserve fund. The fund. There's been no uh, touched in future request, uh, no previous request. Okay. Want to both at the same time? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, any discussion on this one? Any no. questions? Okay. Thanks. Um, so the next one is from the treasurer. It's for uh, two thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, request of reason is cover payroll on payroll corp switch to all hours coming from treasurer collector. Um, change of personnel mid uh, reason was unforeseen change of personnel mid year, plus additional cost to budget for on hold purchase of seven hundred dollars because jail was closed. She gets her envelopes from the jail. Yep. They get they they come pre printed. Yep. So it's a savings. There's actually a whole uh, the prison system has something called Mass Corps. Um, mass correction and uh, they have a lot of discounted mm -hmm. things that you can get from them. Um, a lot of stuff is stuff it's manufactured by, by persons in, in the prison system. Some of the stuff is it back up and going now. The prison system, <laughs> I know it's up and going, but <laughs> hope so. is the print shop open? How's that? Uh, oh, so this one is at the Tanker County Jail. Um, I, I I think so, but I'm not positive. It is what it is. All right. Any uh, discussion? Any questions regarding the twenty-five hundred dollar request from the Treasury Department? Okay. Uh, do we have a motion? I make a motion. We approve two hundred and sixty for the Board of Health, twenty-five hundred for the Treasury. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Let's do a roll call. Sorry. Yes. Okay, Patty? Yep. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay, so you did this past reserve fund transfers. We got a, we got a master one we're going to sign, or what are you going to do again? Yeah. Okay, the original. So I'll pass these two around. As far as you know, this is it. it better be, because we're not meeting again. 
I was going to say, this is uh, pretty small and pretty light this year. Um, so reserve fund requests need to happen before July 15th yeah. under state law. Um, I asked the town council to run a, you know, a report. There's one more vendor warrant for FY21. Um, so it should be, payroll's already set. Um, so it's only wrap up invoices and I sent email out with everybody you know, warning them. Oh, I'm sure they'll be. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get a nice surprise for somebody. But I hope not.
Yeah. In response to the, the pandemic. And, right. and Plus, the cash flow is open again. Right. Yeah, yeah. Not, I don't think so. Are they going to? Mm-hmm. According to the newspaper, they are, too, if you believe the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't see the article. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. What's in the Gazette? The guy, yeah, the reporter. Said, the reporter called me a couple times. Now, not let it open. No. They can do them whenever they want. Who phase is that? Well, are you sure? You will. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You never know what big is what the governor what phase he's putting that in. That was the dead last phase. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
are they getting single or are they getting family? Number one. And on the on re, as like retirement, we contribute to their county retirement. Right. Does that do we figure that in? I mean, I I have police and fire. There's not a lot of employees, so right. I probably could, if I got the numbers, I could say you know the police department budget is two hundred fifty thousand, and the benefits are another fifty thousand. So they're it's three hundred thousand divided by fifteen thirty seven, but. I don't know if that's the direction we want to go in. Well, I think the discussion, I, I, I think this is a slippery slope here. Um, and just personally, somehow, I, I think our, our last discussion, the last meeting, we said that we would be better off if we took a look at all insurance and benefits, divided it by the number of employees that take that and then come up with a number and that number will apply to if the police have five the police have five if the uh, schools have 30 then it's that's where that, where that goes because I think we want to absolutely avoid any chance of being well, able to identify anybody. right. no, anybody's personal I situation it's got to go by average per employee. I agree. So yeah. Can I ask a question? When you yeah. talk about the police and fire, and you've got the budget for police and fire, I'm assuming that also includes the insurance and the benefits. No. It doesn't. It's all completely no. separate. Okay. So that's Schools the same way. Schools the same way. So in that case, yes, yeah, wait, you know, yeah. There's a section in the town budget that's called insurance and benefits, which is health insurance. Right. Uh, what we pay in for Social Security, retirement, anything else. But it's a, a lump number, and we got to take however many town employees we have, be them full time or part time. Do the part timers get the benefits? Only if they work over 20, 20 hours. hours. They're and then they're prorated, I assume? Like 20, no. Okay. No, if, I, I was going to say, if you work 20 hours, you're eligible for full-time full, full benefits. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then there's some people take the family plan, which is considerable, and then there's other people that just have a single. Thing. Right. So. Right. That's but I, we, I don't think you can get into that. I think you no. just. Mm -hmm. I think taking the average, then that's the way to handle it. Right. We just meld those numbers together and come up with a per employee cost for insurance and benefits, and that gets applied right across the board depending on the numbers. I, as long as there's a disclaimer at the beginning that this is what it is. And it may not be representative of you or of you or you know of right. any of us. Right. This is just an average of what we pay per employee. I, per I think when it comes to to the health insurance part of it, you, the number you use is the the number of town employees that are getting health insurance. I'm technically a town employee because right. I'm a constable, right. but I don't qualify right. for health insurance. Right. Okay, so let's, let's so that's you know, the, so what's not clear to me yet is whether we're going to look at health insurance or insurance and benefits. That's all. All inclusive. Um, overhead all to, overhead to hire an employee. Overhead to hire an employee. Overhead to hire an employee. You've got to pay for his retirement. Right. So it needs to be all of the right. Not yeah. just, just, yeah. Not right. just health right. insurance. Let's not break it down a little bit. Yeah. No, we, I, I, one ball. just include the yeah. right. J just include anybody that's 20 hours or more. Right. Yep. Okay. So the same rule, rules apply for the benefit benefits as do for the health insurance. Right. Or do you get benefits of like time off, like that stuff if you're under 20 hours? Retirement. No, I, I think retirement. I think retirement might be prorated. To be okay. It's gonna be so minor. Yeah, it is because it goes by how much you make. Yeah. It's a percentage. 
I know like Franklin County retirement is uh, a percentage of your pay goes into that. Okay, so we have we are in agreement then that when it comes to insurance and benefits, that it's that it's all together, uh, whatever the benefit package is, and it's an average of employees that work 20 hours or more, or more per week. And when that number is derived, and we have that number, then that number will, will be applied. So and that's the number we will use. That's good. We ought to be jumping down to Brian. Exactly. Right. right. So we kind of jumped, uh, we leapfrogged. If we were trying to make things yeah. easier. We went to the meeting quick. We went to the last guy. Uh, yeah. And in conclusion, <laughs> Ryan, I guess um, you have you put out some you put out some numbers here, and that I, um, yeah, and um, total cost to the town. I just I printed out the last sheet that um, that you sent out, and. What I liked about this, and I and, and I think it applies right across the board, is that government and school are separated. So we already kind of have that done. Maybe that should also be um, how we move forward with uh, some of the other um, expenditures that blend. Because when you look at total town employees. How many employees do we have? One, according uh, to the site, was 151. Well, that includes that everybody I think over time. Uh, that's going to include, and I, I do make a tie. Um, yep. I think that's going to include anybody who gets a paycheck. Anybody gets a paycheck. So, right. If you're the, if you're the constable, I get constable, a paycheck. Right. You get a paycheck. Yep. If you're the, the moderator. You know, or for the stipend position, I uh, think they're dog officer, the animal I, I, I can't get to, I can't get to 170. I just can't. Yeah, 2019 it was 150. Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen the, I've oh, you saw the numbers to those. Yeah. And, and, and I'd have to look deeper, but how, I was going to say, how do we, who do we ask when, how many people, 20 hours or more, are working on her? Yeah, I mean, it's the majority of them are going to be at the school, right? I mean, we have we can do, and then we're going to have you know firefighters or reserve police officers who are on the who are on the payroll, right? They're going to yeah. they're going to collect a little bit. But I mean, in terms of staff, I mean, it's me, Lynn, Janet, Amy, um, and Dia's the assistant assessor, four guys at the highway, right? Nine, um, two police officers, police officers, and then that's eleven. Then we have the reserves, so like probably like eight on the reserve list. We have firefighters, like nineteen. Yeah, you know, some of those are going to some of the, a lot of those are duplicate, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't even mean, need to say twenty. Even if we had twenty, just um, the school well, had what you would consider general right. government, excluding the schools. In the in the, in the well, school. you got the librarian. Yeah, that's yeah. Very no. Mm -hmm. that's no. Oh, no. No matter how you do it, you take that number, what we come up with that number, and multiply that by what we call the average, it's not going to come anywhere near the total. No. We're close to, I mean, we're close to, when, when we, when they calculated for um, uh, Affordable Care Act, um, reporting, I think we're somewhere around ballpark of like 50. I mean, we're right at that threshold of about 50. 50 employees. So I think it's 50 FTE. So. so then, this information that comes from the government web website, that must be individual paychecks or paychecks that go out to individuals. And how many of those individuals, like, you receive 50 some in a year. You get one, one of them, two. Yeah, um, depends on the election. Right. right, whatever. Right. Say right. two. Okay, two. So, um, 
So the fact of the matter is that um, all of these numbers are blended. Who, who would then, so it was, so Lynn would have that information as to the actual number of individuals. Or so who does our payroll? Right. We pull from the payroll. Pull from the payroll and ask the payroll company how many individual employees received at least one paycheck from this town in the last year. But if we're worried yeah. about insurance and benefits, why? Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want more. everybody. You want that one. No, no, no. You want 20, 20 hours, hours or more. more. Right. But one thing we have to be aware of is that this government salary website is up and going, and it's the government. Okay. So when someone says we got 150 an employee, employee says we got 150 employees, right, and say no, we only no. got right, right. we got 100. Or well, how they come up with this 150? Oh, well, they come up with it because anybody, so that's why when we double check with the salary people, okay. now the salary people say, well, yeah, actually, we got like 156, so we got, you I know, mean, individual, individuals who received a paycheck at some point in the year, during the year, right. they would say, okay, so that's how that is, but the I reality of that is a pretty high number. My question is, do they get counted twice if they work as a constable and then as a fill in the blank? Does that count as two people? Or does that count because you're doing two separate jobs? Or does it count as one person getting two paychecks? You know, that's don't know. That's the only thing that's the only way I can see to get to one fifty one is if right. we've got people that are doing two separate jobs. Well there are. Oh I mean we got Lynn was doing it. Look at Lynn was doing two yeah. jobs for the longest time. Um, she'd get picked up anyway, but does that count as two separate jobs or does that count as one person getting paid? You know, even like Fred Orlando, he's on the, he's a selectman and he's on the board of assessors. So he's right. getting two, get two right. paychecks. Right. The easel, you know, but the, but the, the, um, the payroll people should be able to tell us that he doesn't count twice. He only counts once. Right. He does get two checks, but he's only one person. I, I would believe. Or tell us otherwise, and we, can make, the math, and we can make the math do the math ourselves. Okay. How many people receive a paycheck? All right, so that's that. Um, all right. Um, so we went down that rabbit hole because. It was his fault. <laughs> I remember. I remember. No, I remember. I, I, I wanted pointing at the yeah. hole, and, and we all jumped. I wanted some clarification on how to do my math. Oh, okay. Um, now I know how to do it. Okay, so it's rolling back, taking it back a step. We're in agreement that that the benefit package is averaged out. Um, for the 20 hours or more um, per week employee. So we'll try to get to that. I'm not sure how we get there, but, um, but this is a start. So you got, Brian, you got total cost of town. Is there anything you'd, you'd like to add to these numbers that you've been digging into? No, so off. Uh, if we're going to, I'll need to look at retirement. I'll need to have a conversation with <clears throat> with the Franklin Group in retirement to see how that makes that work. Um, I mean, so, so the, in terms of total health insurance costs, I mean, we also have the retiree costs that were that we carry, um, both school and government, both school and town. How many employees do we pay for their insurance? We have 24 people. 24. 24 oh. active okay. employees that that yeah, is pay insurance for. Yeah. How many do we pay into? If you, if you want to go to how many we pay into FICA, that's a completely different way of figuring it. It's going to be all those part time ones. Hard to come up with that. 
Are we trying to get to a number that actually matches exactly what the budget was, or are we trying to... No, 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 okay. no absolutely not. Because, this is why we're doing yeah, this. It won't. There's, no, it way won't. there's, there's no way. It. It can. I think that the people that we pay FICA or the under 20, under 20 hours, it, it's going to be such a small blip in the, in the per person cost, it's barely even worth looking at. Or with the FICA and stuff, just lump it in. It's not going to change the number that much. I, I think we this, this 24 is going to be pretty close. Yep. That we want to use. Yep. And then we just take those and average that out per employee to come up with the number. Right. So that it can be applied to well, like various the, departments. Like I got the so, so it's right. I got to come up with a number where you can apply four employees to and say that's what it costs this year. That's what it cost five years ago. This is the increase, the average increase year over year. Right. Exactly. That's all we have to do is find that number. Right. So he's all set on that number. The other number that is a little bit, a little squeegee is how do you look at the schools? When you look at the schools, like for instance, Frontier Regional High School, insurance and benefits are in there. They're in that number. Okay. Now, Brian, when I and we'll, we'll jump to Frontier Regional High School because well, I get it here. So, um, so when I I got a hold of Shelly um, email, um, and she um, she gave me some information, and um, that information start off with the enrollment. Okay. There's an enrollment, for instance, let's just, Frontier Regional High School enrollment for Waitley, Waitley kids that went to Frontier. Now there's an enrollment number for DESE Chapter 70 formula, formula. and that number for FY21 20, is 71. 71 students from Waitley that went to Frontier Regional High School. Now, there's also um, another enrollment number, a five-year rolling in num number, which for the same year, the number is 48. Wow. <laughs> well, what are we paying on 71 or are we paying on 48? What? We're paying on 48. I think because our average just went down. The rolling average is for the regional school agreement. The 71 is for Chapter 70 money. Yeah. Where are they coming up with that number? I have that showing that about why there's such a discrepancy. Okay, so that's something. That's 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 a question. Wow. And um, I'm assuming we pay on the 48. Yep. I believe, I believe that's how the regional district agreement is set, so that it avoids the, well, trying to avoid these spikes. And, you know, right. one year we're, we lose 10 kids, so we pay, yeah, whatever, $30,000 less, and then next year we get more kids. So, um, I think that's why they have a rolling average, but. Um, so the 48 is the rolling average? That's the, I think that's what Paul said. Yeah, but what five year rolling average? I suspect that 71 may be, they may be including kids who, kids who may be going to charter, transfer it out, or school choice somewhere else. Well, a lot of them, you go to public back private schools in ninth grade, you've got schools. Franklin Tech in go ninth grade. Tech. I'm thinking it's any, any school district that kids may go to that, that Frontier is responsible for making it. We have to send, Frontier has to send money, money to with <coughs> Students to whatever. Because I'm thinking for the school choice, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We pay. Uh, five, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's still a cost, and that still goes. Okay. I think right. that may be an explanation. I need to clarify that with your. Um, okay. So we clarify that. So once. Um, for Frontier, once that's clarified, uh, we know what the budget is, we know exactly what the student 
number is, then it's simply, you know, we know what the numerator and denominator is, and simply come up with the number. I have, I got some numbers. And that, that'll be that. Okay. Um, so that's, that's Frontier Regional School um, number. The Waitley Elementary School, um, I would imagine it's going to be similar to it. I, I'm, you know, Bob's not here, so. Yeah. Um, How are we handling school choice <coughs> in Waitley Elementary? Um, we don't see it. Yeah. Okay. We, we, they give us a number. They tell us how many kids they brought in, and I'm pretty sure somewhere along the line they told us how much money they take in, but it doesn't it goes straight into the it. school budget. Right. Okay. It goes straight into their yeah. budget. We don't, we give them, you know, whatever they asked for this year was, you know, what, 1.8? Yeah, 1.8. 1.8 million. And are like, we going to use that number? Are we going to use that 1.8 million divided by the number of kids, including the school choice for the kids? I think we have. Okay. What does it cost the taxpayer residents of the town of Waitley Wait Wait to educate one student in Waitley Elementary School in a uh -huh. year. Okay. And it's the same thing for Frontier. We'll yeah. look at it that way. And it's the same thing with what does it cost that resident per mile, what does it cost that resident to maintain general government, fire, police, and the employee picture. <laughs> Which includes in all these departments insurance and benefits right. coming from Brian. Okay. All right. Um, so, kind of have an understanding what where we need to go with this. Um, any thoughts, discussions? Dan mentioned something that raised a question in my mind. About looking five years back and comparing it to today, are we going to go back and try to get some history developed? So it's a it's a good question. Um, I you know <coughs> I, we put the budget. If we get the budget and, and then we if we can get those numerators and denominators <coughs> and we can be sure of them, yeah, I, I think I think we should do it. It should, should give us an idea of what we are doing, and then we can closely track what we are going to be doing. Right. I think you'll have a better idea of what you're going to be going. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a living right. document, remember. I mean, we're not going to get it right the first time. Oh, no. You know, they, we're going to be tweaking it throughout well, the years and whatnot. We want to get it close. I'm not saying we I mean, we'll put the time into it, but there may be things that don't work. Well, when you tweak it, then you've got to go back that previous year and tweak that right. number. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you can't right. do a budget this way or do a cost per this yeah. year and then tweak it for next year. No, because no. we got to have the same criteria. Yeah, exactly. So it should be accurate if you're going to tweak it that way. Right. you got to come back and do it. So that's why it's so important that that, the, uh, that we all do it the same way. Do it the right. same Every way. way. And, uh, yeah. and we get those numbers right the first time. And, uh, all right, so if we come up with 25 employees, roughly, there. Is that the number that you're going to take and divide into the cost to give us a cost per employee? No, because 24 is the, the employees who are taking health insurance, not the ones that are eligible. Uh, oh, we have people that are eligible that work that, more than 20 hours that aren't that are on their they're house, yeah. house yeah. Land or I, don't, I don't take insurance. I think we should have that in the even if they don't take it. It's, if we're looking at an average per employee, yep. it's got to be that cost averaged out to that number of employees. Okay. The total yeah. total employees, not just employees that take, take it. Right, right. The total, because that's important yeah. because that would actually lower our costs yes. um, overall. Uh, for instance, Brian is doing a great great book by not taking over. Uh, the city of Agawam wants to pay for it, so. I'd say go for it. I have. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I agree. So, I would say maybe 
me to forget things. Yeah, I can take a example. It's all eligible. All eligible. Thank you. Yeah. Are these individual things going to come up with a little bit? I do like uh, basis investments when I do a, when I do a cost estimate. And I say how I got this, what I did, it's obviously like a two page document, three page document. Yeah. But are we going to each get, be expected to write a little paragraph about this is how we got these numbers? I think if it requires an explanation, yeah. yeah. Just, to, just, to, I mean, you, you're going to want to know it for yourself. And then, you know, for this web page that we're going to put together, um, there, there should be an asterisk. For instance, you know, Frontier Regional High School, we came up with these numbers based on total number of students, total expenditures voted up for on town floor, and um, that's, that's, that's it. You know, insurers and benefits were in there. We're already there. Yeah. And then when it comes to Whitley Elementary School or fire or employees, I think we're going to have to put town employees. We're going to have to put an asterisk uh, that this was the number we came up with to average out. This was the average number. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, but you so how did you come up with the total? So for instance. So let's say, you know, the police budget is X. The police budget is 210000 plus another roughly 550, 5500 for the Quinn bill, which is 216100 Okay. That's what I use for a number. Okay. Divided by 1537 is 14060 Okay. And then you're going to add to that the number that comes up for insurance and benefits, but it, it's going to go in there. So someone is going to say, how'd you get that number? Because here's the budget number. Well, we got that number. And they are added in the Quinn bill. And six people that are getting paychecks from the police department that are getting benefits. Right. And okay. we added the benefit. Well, I thought we weren't going to do that because we didn't. Don't use, don't, not the way you worded it. There are six people from the police department getting insurance benefits. You can't say that. No, that's what I'm saying. No, you're, no. you're getting too specific. Right. We're not using that. You're going to say the benefit package right. to the police department costs X on X. average per yeah. right. right. Whether they're getting it or not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. Doesn't matter. Okay. Does it make okay. more sense just to have the insurance and benefits as its own line item as well as whatever it is I'm going to end up doing? That, as would, its own line that, item? that would make a lot of sense, except it doesn't portray the actual cost, for instance, Wakeley Elementary School, mm -hmm. you know, $1.8 million. There's no insurance and right. in benefits. When you go for a job at an employer, you get a compensation package. Just, right. And, you know, as an employee, you ask. I mean, part of this whole process is you want to know what kind of benefits you're going to get for you and your family. And the employer is is um, is making a big deal about that because it's costly, and that's part of your package. They want to let you know that you know this is a big plus. So the taxpayer, when they look at the cost of educating the child, never sees the insurance and benefits. Okay. <coughs> We're going back to the denominator as opposed to lumping all the town employees under one insurance benefit envelope and dividing it by 24 or 50 or 100 or whatever it is. So, okay. So, once we come up with that average number, then that average number can be applied to each department. Right. Another thing that just came to my mind is we have this uh, longevity payment that we make to town employees after five years or whatever it is, ten years. I think <coughs> I don't know what my time. I think about ten. I think. But where is that? And is that a that's not a line item? That's a line item in, in the individual budgets where applicable. So for like highway hazard, you'll see it highway. 
this well, in this budget as a longevity payment? Yeah, I think it's in there. So it's not carried under the employee of the town or the insurance benefit. It's, it's under their regular budget, even though it's that was voted for on town floor. Yeah. If it's on the regular budget, then we don't have to worry about getting it. Yeah. Okay. Dan, I don't know. Do you have it? Uh, I might have. It should be. The highway should have one. Well, I have Police it. should have one. Assessors. So, um, again, getting this, I, I think the one nugget that we're all waiting for is what is that number, what is that cost number on average? For employees, because you you know you get school, you get town, and so how do we get to that number so that we could use that when we calculate each of these individual costs? Can't use the <coughs> we can't use the uh, the numbers that the school is paying against our individual departments. No. Well, well, that, that, well, that becomes another number. I, I mean, yeah. you know, so how many employees, because they're town employees. They're not, I mean, I know they're in the school, but they're town employees. And their <clears throat> benefit package comes through the town. So then, then included. So they got to get included to get to that average number. So that one okay. number that we're all going to use. Right. Okay. Yeah. Frank, can, can you think we can get there? For, I think we can get there. I mean, I mean, we can get the total number of eligible employees for health insurance. Right. Divide that by the total cost that we pay That's for active, let, let's say active employees. Right. Um, but I don't, I, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what that tells us in terms of individual department expenses. Well, that's kind of what I mentioned about the schools. Mm -hmm. You say some, Brian, of those, some of those budgets are, are work differently, they're, they're not mm -hmm. like the other departments. You're saying it could be so far from reality that, well, I, I'm thinking about different departments, right? Yeah. I, uh, I'm thinking of, let's compare assessors who had, well, she, never mind, that's not a good example. Um, Black Board Administration, um, we don't, neither of us take health insurance. Um, compared to, um, this department where you got department two people or highway department which is yeah you know closer to four taking it right yeah. um is the intent to get that level of detail within this or just get the average of town employees in other words if we had 24 and only 20 took insurance does it really well you're going to be breaking it down in yours i mean if, so we're going to break it down as, a, as if they all got insurance. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. No, no, I know. But that's what I'm saying. We're not breaking it down. You know, you're going to do police and fire. And then there's the town employees, which I'm assuming are like you and Lynn. And then I apparently am doing. And I, I guess I don't see that it really matters all that much what individual, if we're not going to break it down to the individual town, to that level of detail, I don't know if it really matters. So then, so then, what would change? I mean, I mean, what would change in terms of what? In terms of tracking this number? Um, uh, I mean, we're taking total cost divided by eligible employees. So, 
if health insurance costs went up, or we would get a we would we would get a higher number, or if the number of people who take health insurance decreases, we would get a higher number. Um, the numbers are going to change for those two factors. Yeah. So then, what does I guess what does that tell us? What what does the number tell us? The numbers only tell us and only get us. It doesn't get us to the end of the rainbow. It That's only done. gets us. It only gets us partway there because we, because this project cannot get that specific. No. And we we just can't. So if we have. We know what we paid for insurance and benefits. It was voted for in town floor. Yeah, okay. All we need is the number of employees eligible for that insurance. That's, yep. all, that's all we need. And we just do that math and we get a number. And then that number gets applied to the employees. What, what employee cost what right. employee cost is and uh, employee compensation and then that number gets applied to now here's the question does it get a, for instance in the highway or in the fire and police does it get applied to just eligible or does it get applied to the entire I think it's department got, I think it's got to be applied to the entire department because then you're gonna, if you say, yeah, you, you, we don't didn't want to do that. We right. don't want to. It's got to be the entire department. Yeah, well, I would say like highway. You, you give me that number, and I just divide it by four. Once you get to four, yeah, multiply it by four employees, or yeah, okay. So you got the the, the total number of employees, and then that's it. We do now, the same thing with the schools. In the in the case of police and fire, I can go to the town. Uh, report and see under the police you've got you know two full-time guys and you've got eight or ten part-time guys whether they're active or not doesn't isn't my problem I'm just going to take that number of, of possible employees and use that number eligible. same thing with the fire department eligible right. employees right. right I don't I'd be very surprised to find out anybody on the fire department was getting benefits Employees or eligible employees? Because those are two different. Those I think it has to be eligible employees. Because our part-time officers are not are not so Right. Okay. So it has to be eligible employees. All right. Because if how do you how am I going to figure that out for the fire department? Ask John. I don't think anyone there is that. I don't think anybody is either. So then you get into you know they pay themselves out of the so they're not association no benefit. they're not benefited period so yeah. <laughs> right so it doesn't apply I don't think it applies to one it applies to two yeah I'm starting to question the wisdom of doing this at all the insurance and benefit side maybe it's just that it's just that no one knows. This is probably most important with the schools. You never truly know what the cost of, well, at Frontier Region, Regional High School we will, because the benefits are included in what they request from us. So we know that if we could just get the right number of students, that would be very helpful. But in Waitley Elementary, because they are town employees, that's a separate item we voted in every year. So those insurance and benefits get scattered out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the taxpayer so can, I, can, can never see it. Right. So I guess I'd go back then to why not carry it as a separate line item and make it a cost per uh, residence in the town as opposed to a cost per student or a cost per mile or a cost whatever it is. The denominator is going to be. Yeah, well, I guess, I guess, I guess you could do that. You know, and, um, and that way we don't have to worry about taking the fire department budget and figuring yeah. out how many people are there, who's benefited and who's not, and then trying to add it in and divide it by. That's true. Something. Yeah. 
Well, we could, yeah, I mean, we could approach it that way, and then on on the um, on the website page, we could position it so that it was so that it was very obvious, and people could see right away that here is the cost per employee, and that if we noted, you know, the schools have 30 employees. Right. And whether they're eligible or not. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I still agree with, with what's being said here, especially what he just said. It's not going to be a true picture. We're not going to be able to take that number, let's say 25, and whatever he comes up with for a number, and then multiply it out and have that equal the line item in the budget for overhead, which includes FICA, insurance, right. blah, 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 blah. It's not going to include that number. Well, it's going to be way less. Capital improvements, I mean, it just... It, it can't be, because we are leaving out a bunch of stuff. Yeah. What are we leaving out? Well, uh, you include uh, retirement. You're including longevity. Well, we, we didn't mention it. So you're leaving that stuff out. So well, I would be better to word, I think, just use the word, say, insurance. If we want to know what it costs to insure a town employee, just take that number. Okay. And so we'll word it that way. It's and that includes all the benefits? No. Just, the, just health insurance? Just the health insurance. See? Because if you start with all the benefits, then you've got to get all these little nitty gritty ones. Like, like how many of them are, are getting, uh, Brian mentioned a couple of them there that, that, that we haven't even talked about, that whether you're going to include them or not. What you do, that number is not going to come up the way we think it is. And it's going to be embarrassing because they're going to turn around and say, well, in, in the, the town report it says for all these items added together it comes up to uh, 15000 uh, and then you add it, you take the 25, what you told me per individual, it only comes up to 12. Where's the other 3,000? That, that number's not going to be true. It's going to be a very hard picture to draw if you try to draw that number true. Okay, so what we have is we have a line item that we vote every year in town floor for insurance and benefits. But could we just take that number? and take the number of employees that that number represents represents that that number services that and come more up more with sense. and that come up with an average that would make more sense to the the townspeople who read this and say okay now i can figure out yeah. what that truly that truly is the right number yeah so because you have rather hard, than getting involved you have a hard number of all the insurance yeah. and benefits you have a hard right. number of the Just number of employees. That. Never mind. Right. And trying to break this down by department, where some employees are eligible, some aren't, some right. elect right. to take it, some don't. Yep. And we really, you're right. We're getting too really You can't do that. It's got to be what's in black and white. Okay. So we could do that, and then we could come up with that average number. Yeah. Because we just have two numbers to deal with. Right. And then we could, and then we could follow that number all the time. Right. I think that's going to be a better plan. Brian, does that sound okay to you or not? Does that sound better? Yeah. Um, you want to talk about the finance kind of dashboard? Yeah. Because um, it's along the same lines. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at it. No, I didn't. I saw Jim's um, note to you. Because it kind of gets to, I think, what we're talking about. So I think, you know,
So for instance, um, so this is municipal finance trend dashboard. I, I think I sent you guys the link. Um, this is the this is the data analytics and something else, data banking. Um, so I just want to look at general fund expenditures for a second. So each year, the town council submits expenditures, right? Okay. It's a schedule A. On uh, schedule A, she submits each of the expenditures in each of these categories. So this is, I think this is weekly, right? Um, yep. So I, I search for Waitley over here on the side here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can pick a town and then you can submit it and then it gives you the um, data in the chart. This is where I get a lot of the information that the PowerPoint that I do over here. Right. Um, so it gives you, let's say, so general fund expenditures, right? So let's look at, this is obviously education, right? Um, so in, in 2020, the, Town weight we spent just over three million dollars in education of our total budget. Total budget. So that's going to include that's going to include tech, frontier, we have elementary school. I believe on the schedule A you can get I believe it's broken down a little bit further, but it's not shown here. So you can do so you can do some some broad generalizations, right? With this, with this general government. The yeah. general government, these are actual expenditures by business. Um, so 473, 722 divided by whatever you want to uh, whatever you want to divide it by if that's total residence, and that would give you a cost of, for general government that was actually spent in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and you can obviously see um, it's mostly the same. I'm sure there's probably a reason we could look into this why that you know more than double. Yeah. Um, so you can get a you can get a, a, a per resident cost for general government fairly easily without without a lot of you can but in here it's a public safety insurance issue. and benefits are not in there so correct so I think insurance and benefits I think fall under this unclassified fall under unclassified yeah um, so, so it could be insurance so we, benefits retirement those types of things and I and this is a good slide but if you're just an average taxpayer. Yep. And you would be given information that said, this is what you pay for in unclassified. Right. The average person doesn't even know what that means. It's, it, it, it had, there, there is no granular uptake for the average citizen, resident, taxpayer with regards to that number. To that number, even the education thing here, which was three million and change, yep. that doesn't include insurance and benefits for all those teachers, all that staff, and then they come out and they want to do a cost per child to educate. Oh, we can do that at Frontier. We we don't know what Waitley is because for years those costs have been separated, right. and that is. That's a little bit of a shell game. In my, the way I look at it, it's a shell game. And we kind of need to put the shells back together, um, at least for the view that we're trying to get to. Um, so that's, and so this, that's this is just one example yep. uh, of what they have. Yep. Um, There's a lot of good information in here. Yep. So, Um, so that's you know that's one of the things that that we can break down further. Um, the reason I want to show this is because it's a lot of good information about. Hey, do they? Is there any information in here on just the benefit end of it? Um, Again, I missed that, Paul. What did you ask? What's that? I missed that. What did you ask? Uh, is there data in here that just addresses insurance and benefit side? Um, you know, like we have a line item. I would say no. Yeah, I think we have to. We get to dig down deeper. Yeah, I don't think you have
and the reason I wanted to show this was I mean, it's for anybody at home who wants to. I mean, some of it's pretty down in the weeds, but a lot of good stuff about profits in two and a half, and yeah. tax levy, and those types of things. Right. Um, and it gives you a sense of, of revenue and trends. I, I mean, the, the point of it, right, is to show trends over mm -hmm. over how many of our fiscal years. I think it goes back probably. So does our budget that we voted on in town meeting get uploaded into this at some point? Um, so, yes, uh, when they, when everything's submitted to, <coughs> to the tax rate, um, yeah, the budget gets submitted. So, so these are, these are actual expenditures, that's why it's going to be only 20 yeah. Um, yeah. I just didn't know when 2021 might show up as a fiscal year. Isn't it already beyond? Yeah. Uh, mine, mine starts in October. It closed on uh, yeah. March 30th. So I didn't know, you know, if, if we're waiting on a three month lag to see 2021? Yes, the folks are not. Yep. Um, yes, we'd have, to, we'd have to dig down a little deeper as to. And so how did you get to that screen, Brian? This is the 351 report. Here for 351 okay. report. Okay. Um, and that allows you to, to pull out the data. Um, it, 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 but we'll have to, I mean, it's going to take some, you know, just going to take some, it's, it's a good jumping off point for actual expenditures if we want to use that, right. especially if we're going to be looking back. Yeah. Um, and we want to look at trends. Right. But it, yeah, we're going to have to look and see. I'm pretty sure it's broken down more on the Schedule A in terms of unclassified. Yep. I mean, I think we'll be able to, I'm pretty sure that it's broken down into retirement, health insurance. At, at this level, I don't think it's intended to, intended to get there, but uh, it does give you some general, granted it doesn't include benefits, but it gives you some general sense of trends that we consistently over, you know, over, for maybe fiscal years we want to look at. Right. That's why I asked about the 2021. Okay. Because okay. once we get the 2021 data is in there, we can actually compare it to the budget that we just passed. Or you guys can yeah. look at the 2020 and compare it to the budget that was passed last year right. and see what that $89,512 is relates to in the budget that was passed. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, <clears throat> when we get a more clear picture, of the insurance and benefit number that we're comfortable with. Then when it comes time for the new budget season and you know the school department has negotiated a contract, it's going to be X amount of dollars for salaries. Well we can now also look at you know, insurance and benefits are going to go up 8%. Yeah. Now we add that in, okay, and to ourselves, and, and we can look at what the, what the actual increase to the town is, total package. For next year. For the next one. Right. So, but we have to begin this understanding and dialogue in order to have, um, you know, a strong picture. One of the things that I think we need to start talking about or start trying to figure out is, you know, we have a capital, uh, plan for vehicles and, you know, uh, the school and this building and that kind of stuff, you know, what's the, what's the 10 year plan for the highway department? What's the 10 year plan for the fire department? Is there one? Police department. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm beginning to, you know, I mean, I've known this all along, but sooner or later, we're going to get have to get out of that highway department garage. It's outlived its usefulness. And that's not 
a $800,000 project. That's an $8 million project. And, you know, we can sit here and look at these screens and say, you know, historically, for the last 20 years, we've gone along at 2 3% every year it goes up. And, you know, we're way under our levy limit, all this other stuff. Well, if all of a sudden we got a $8 million bond to build a new highway department, what's that going to do to things? And that's what you consider re regionalizing. You know? Uh, that's, you know, there's a lot of that on the table, too. A lot of that. Um, but, you know, right now, we just sort of concentrate on what are the true costs of each of these departments in a given fiscal year? And we can tie a marker to each of these departments, whether it's miles, whether it's vibes, um, whether it's students, and you can have a cost per marker then you can look at that trend over time. And it means something now to the average person who pays taxes in this town. Then it means something. You know, that if this, this means stuff to us, and it might mean stuff to a number of other people. Yeah. But I can't yeah. say it's going to mean something to Mrs. McGillicuddy down on River Road, right. who jumps on the website and takes a look at what costs are. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, that's the point, and um, um, so yeah, I think this is something that you know we can glean a lot of information out of here that's going to help us out and maybe give give us another view of things. But right now, um, I try to use the kiss method, you know, keeping it simple, straight, yeah. and and. And if we can come up with that number, Brian, Brian, yeah, Brian. Because I was really trying to get off the uh, Brian's gone. No, no, right back on. Yeah. Oh, whoa! whoa. <laughs> you gotta know okay. You gotta know the magic okay. trick. Can you exit the lobby stage left? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So I think that's. I think that's. What we're waiting for. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. I mean, for schools, um, I got to get a, a firm number. Um, insurance and benefits, where we know the two numbers, employees, and what's been voted for. Um, This is the other question. Are we going to separate school and town? Well, I guess we will. We mean Waverly and Frontier? <coughs> no. Um, town employees? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess we will because, um, because we're reporting schools and we're reporting general government and we're, and we're looking at the employee uh, group as a whole. So as a whole, and then broken down into town employees like you or Lynn, right? Yeah, and that's And it. then Waitley Elementary. Yeah. Does, did, does it, you want it broken out? Police and fire as well? Yeah. Yeah. Are we keeping those together, or are they going to be separated? I do them separate. Okay. Only because the... Police department is should three be times higher than should be separate yeah. the way they are. Yeah, I just they're, they're so. combined on this on this list. So I yeah. but we've been talking about them separately. Right. Okay. Um, a lot of this discussion is fragmented. I, I understand that, and it's <clears throat> it's mostly because you There's know the ways things come up, you know, and, and issues come up and questions, and so it gets to be gets to be a little convoluted, but... Um, Have we given ourselves a deadline? Well, that was the other thing. Um, I, um, it's July. 
then um, August will be here before you know it. And Brian, do you foresee any additional meetings coming up downstream? Only if you need another reserve fund transfer. Oh, we better not. Good. It's not going to run out of if time. This, if this were something we were to meet on separately, would we be would we be violating open meeting law? If there's a quorum of you, okay. So it doesn't matter that it's not a, a normal agenda item. We would be okay. Okay. Motion for seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> Two groups have started. <laughs> You're under the big line. Big line. All the, time. All the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I see Paul walking, we do not talk about finances. Yeah, but that's not, you're not a forum. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I, you know, I think general government is set. Jim's got that number. And we're going to keep insurance and benefits separate. I'm going to keep it on the side, and so it will be easily extrapolable to whatever costs are um, that we identify, um, and let's see how that looks. Okay, I mean, there's nothing written in stone here, but let's go with that and let's see how that's going to play out and what that's going to look like. Is it, is it understandable and uh, does, it have, does it have impact? Because Really, the, this whole thing started, in my mind, because of I know what happens in the schools. I know what happens when the salary, there's insurance and benefits, and how do we bring them together to look at what it costs us to ed educate one child and wait in the elementary school. And it's not that easy. Don't forget the retirement payout. And don't forget the retirement payouts. And that's an answer. Is that part of the benefit though? Or is that yeah. Yeah. Is that that's what you're It doesn't show up anywhere. No. Oh, I don't know. Oh good, let's get a dark fork. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I could be wrong. I, I, maybe I'll take that back. But in my opinion, so yeah, I, I, I don't see it anywhere, but I don't I could be missing. Could it be in the individual wow. budgets of the uh the like the Whitley Elementary School? It could be if, if they know somebody's, you know, retiring in advance, far enough in advance. Um, but I mean, if someone were to decide to retire, they found the, the contract that's entered into the union and school committee, if that retirement provision involves the payout of sick time that's still in there, yeah. then. See, so, yeah. what's, you know, the true picture? Know, yeah. What's the real number? You know, and and, and and it takes these kinds of discussions to try to bubble up and get that thing about service. <coughs> so anyway, we've been here for almost an hour and a half, and um, yeah, make a motion we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Roll call. Aye. 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 Okay. Patty? Yes. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dan? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We are adjourned.